Note taking is the biggest scam in the world. From the dawn of time, we've been told that taking notes is what helps you study and retain information. This is utterly false and this has to be disproven. While some studies show that note taking may be effective, it actually takes away from the main points and makes you focus on the individual aspects rather than looking at it from a holistic point of view. This makes it harder to form connections between the material you're learning and applying that to the questions you're going to be asked in the exams, which will lead to lower test scores. In reality, we're just taking notes because we feel like this helps us pay attention to the lecture or lesson but the effectiveness of this method is highly questionable. See, the whole premise behind note-taking is that you're looking at the information that's given to you and then you're summarizing it into your head and writing it down. This helps you summarize and consolidate that information so you can retain it and bring it out when it's needed on the exam. However, most people aren't doing this. What they're doing is aimlessly typing away every single word the professor is saying, even though it's right there on the slide. What's the point of that? It's literally on the slide. True and yeah, that's pretty true. That's true and yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. Some of you may say, and then I take notes exactly like how you're saying and I do really well on my tests. There's a possibility you're still doing well using this method, but that's not what we're questioning. What we're questioning is how effective this method is and if you're wasting your valuable time and productivity using this method when you could actually be using it doing something that's way more important. This lack of productivity leads to more time spent studying even though there are diminishing returns of what you're actually receiving by doing that studying. We're here to help you maximize your productivity so you can spend your time doing the things you really love. Whether that's making YouTube videos, playing sports, or playing video games. Do whatever you enjoy. So here are our tips of how to effectively study in class. Number one, watch the lecture while it's going on. Don't fool around, don't go on your phone, and definitely don't play games. Are you serious right now, bro? You're just wasting your time if you do this, and you might as well pay attention right now so you don't have to go back and re-watch the lecture later. I know, this can be hard sometimes, especially if you have friends in the class and you probably want to have a good time and talk to them. But remember, you can have a good time right after the lecture instead of going back home and cramming all of that content in for the lecture at two times speed. This is also a great way to build your time management skills and develop those vital strategies really early on in your academic career. Number two, find past exams for the classes you're taking. This is by far the best way to study and it's called active recall. We've said this over and over in our videos, but we'll say it again. Active recall is by far the best strategy when it comes to studying for exams. Damn! With note taking, all you're doing is passively reading over the content before the exam. But with active recall, you're making the effort to actually learn something. And that effort is what allows you to retain that content and perform better on your exams. And if it's not obvious already, one of the best ways in order to practice active recall is to do those practice exams. You can find these in multiple different ways through looking at old university repositories, for example, or even asking your professor or your teaching assistants. If you don't have access to a past exam, don't worry, you can just come up with questions by yourself or with your classmates. Whenever I did this for my classes, I found that it got me to think about what the professor would actually put on the exam. And as a result, I did so much better for the courses that I actually put in the effort to make these questions for. Number three, create flashcards for yourself while watching the lecture. You might think, why can't I use flashcards that have already been made? I can find them online. <laughs> well, that's true, but if you do this, you're going to actively think about the types of questions that you'll face on the exam, as well as put in the effort to actively learn the content while it is being taught to you. I personally recommend Anki for this, and I've discovered it ever since I started studying for the MCAT, and ever since then, it's been an invaluable tool for me in terms of memorization. What's more is that Anki is super customizable. It allows you to put set intervals for certain flashcards, so if you want a flashcard to appear more often, you can set an option for it to appear more often, versus if you want a flashcard to appear less often, you can do the same for them. Number four. Write down all of the learning objectives and answer them yourself without looking at the slides. If you've taken any university course, you've probably noticed that a lot of the professors put learning objectives or outcomes at the beginning of the lecture slides. What they don't tell you is that every single question on the exam is based around these objectives. Why ain't no way, boy? 
Boy, ain't no way, boy. How I personally use them is when I'm going over the lecture slides, I read over them once and I print out only the lecture objectives. Then I write down all the answers to those points strictly from memory. If I'm not able to remember a specific point, I just go back to those lecture slides, review them again so that I don't forget them next time. As you can already tell, this just makes the studying much more efficient. Most of the stuff that you wrote down in your notes that you're reading over and over again is probably already in your head. Number five, and our final tip, use voice typing to explain the concept out loud and have it written down automatically. First of all, explaining a concept to yourself is one of the best ways to prepare for an exam because it forces you to think of the content in a way that you can actually understand as opposed to just what the lecture material contains. Secondly, voice typing is so underrated, especially if you're a slow typer, because if you're trying to rush and quickly explain the concept to yourself and your typing is behind, it might not be as efficient for your studying. This tip just makes the process a lot faster. And you can try this yourself by going into Google Docs in the tools section. Just a quick note though, sometimes the words can be inaccurate, so it will help if you could speak clearly or if you have access to a microphone at home. The microphone that I use is in the description below. And that brings us to the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed and realized why note taking just isn't it anymore. And there's so many other better and more efficient ways of getting that 4.0. If you liked this video, please like, please subscribe, and we'll see you next Monday.